Hey, this is Ree here. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate all of you. All thanks to Kali Ma. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. Don't forget to check out my website, paradoxastrology.com. Book your consultation today. I can help you with anything. And if you would like more exclusive occult videos that I don't post on YouTube, consider subscribing to my Patreon. It also helps to support this channel. Okay, so let's talk about the full moon that will be happening on January 25th and what it will mean for you and the world. Now, this full moon will be in Cancer, in Pushya, Nakshatra. So it translates into the nourisher. It's nourishing, it's yielding. Also, its ancient name translates into auspicious and meaning prosperous. The ability to nourish and take care of someone. So the symbol is the cow, which is the universal symbol of motherhood because the cow is able to nourish many different species with its milk. The cow is also regarded in India and Vedic traditions as a god. Pusha is the place on our journey where we can rest safely without any fear. It's the most nourishing of all the nakshatras and it takes us back to our state of infancy when we were around 16 years old where we're blossoming because the other symbol for it is the flower yet you're still in your parents home so you still have that motherly attention and you can feel safe in your mother's arms that's basically the summary of the feeling of it so there will be some people that you can turn to in need during this time who can actually be acting as if they were a motherly figure to you that could be your mom or that could be someone who just has that essence or that could be you as well helping others in that type of form this will be someone that you can reveal your secrets to and feel safe about that this will have to do a lot with cooks and the restaurant businesses as well those will be major themes It'll be all those connected with the dairy industry, the food and drink merchants, rulers, nuns, priests, gurus, spiritual teachers, people that you can go to for guidance, counselors, psychotherapists, charitable organizations, hosts and hostesses in the restaurant business, or that could be like hotel business, any businesses related to water, teachers, education experts, real estate agents, farmers, gardeners, childcare professionals, to name a few. So many people will be spending money during this time on counseling. And like I said, that could be spiritual counseling as well and could include astrologers. Now this nakshatra has to do with the story of the king, the sage, and the cow. So I'm going to briefly describe that. And this isn't word for word. This is just my summary. So there was a king and the king was made aware that there was a sage who owned a cow. And I guess this cow had special magical abilities. So the king went to go check out the cow and he got jealous. He wanted the cow for himself. So when he went to go try to get the cow, it didn't work because the sage also had magical abilities. He had a staff, a magical staff, and he was able to get the king away. So then the king got angry and then he requested his army to go try to get the cow even the army wasn't able to take this cow because of the magical abilities of the sage and the cow so then the king was wondering well how did the sage get all these magical abilities how is he able to do this he found out that it was because of his spiritual practice that he gained this wisdom and these cities the special abilities these supernatural powers so then the king started doing that. He's like, well, if I start doing these meditations, then I'll be stronger than the sage and then I'll be able to get the cow. So then he started doing that for years. He did his meditations and his sadhana. And then eventually when it came time to go get the cow, the sage was no longer interested because he gained the magical abilities for himself. So it was no need for him to get the cow or to even get back at the sage anymore. So it's just showing you that with this nakshatra, it's about giving everything up to the universal will, surrendering to God. That's where your true power is. Your power doesn't come from getting revenge. Your power comes from finding your own power within, and that it will no longer bother you. So that's a very big lesson for many, many people. 
Now, we're going to have the sun in Shravana, Nakshatra, in the seventh house. So leaders in government will be hearing about problems and issues that are dealing with finance, possessions, and family matters, family issues. Leaders or rulers, such as kings and queens, could be dealing with these issues. Speeches will be made. Some speeches will be harsh in communication, maybe aggressive. Some people could have some issues regarding bones or limping, or also hidden health issues can come up. These matters need to be transformed and will also have to do with shared resources, insurance, medical discoveries, social security, and the possibility of a death of a leader in government or some type of official. Shravana has to do with the Paipal tree, which is the tree that Buddha meditated under in order to gain enlightenment. This nakshatra also gives us the wisdom that we require as it is represented by Saraswati. So there's a lot to do with spirituality here, giving up to the universal will, even in Shravana. It's about the Trinity as well, the Trinity of gods. So having that type of knowledge, it will be a good time to post lectures if that's something that you want to do because people will be very interested in listening. This is all about the ear, about listening to others. So that's another reason why a lot of people will go to counseling or have people that they can share their thoughts and feel safe at this time. Shravana relates to Apradarishya Shakti, which is the power to give permanent victory. This is when you join forces with others and it's done for the greater good. With the placement of Mars and Jupiter making a mutual exchange right now, it's a great time for success and we'll talk about that later. There is an emphasis for these next two weeks of returning the gods back to the heavens and the humans back to the earth. As this is the esoteric story of Vishnu in this nakshatra and his three steps that he takes. And it's funny because many reputable people are now claiming that we're in Satya Yug starting February 1st, which corresponds with this, also corresponds with what's happening in India right now, which I will get into as well. So they are claiming that we're exiting Kali Yug. Personally, I don't know what is true, but it is very nice to think about. Remember that the yugs are state of consciousness. So you can enter any state of consciousness that you wish by doing the work. It doesn't matter what everybody's state of consciousness is, does not determine yours. It doesn't matter what yug we're in. You have the ability to enlighten yourself no matter what. It's going to be very important for all of us to listen to our inner voice at this time, our higher self. It will give us clues to the universe because at this time, it will give us clues to our true purpose on earth. This is what this nakshatra is about. Listening to others in a compassionate way is also very important. This sun will help us to bring tasks to completion so that they are done, especially since this is a full moon, which is always when completion takes place. Now, we must be cautious of those that are acting out of self-interest. This is the negative side of this, about gossip and manipulation. Someone pretending to care who really doesn't, that could potentially harm you, as Mars is aspecting Rahu. Deception and bad advice can come through. So that's why we really have to listen to our higher mind. Always listen to your higher mind. Always listen to your inner voice. And especially with everybody, even including me. I am just a human. You, your higher voice and the knowledge of the gods surpasses anything that anybody says so always trust yourself more this pada is really about ambition so there's a lot of ambition to get things done but it's also an indication of talks of war there is a risk of national disasters through warlike activities will also include a lot of themes revolving around teachers preachers scholars students in universities language translators storytellers narratives people doing speeches like i said the music business anywhere where you're listening like the music business listening to a track when you're making it sound technicians telephones anyone using the telephone for their job ancient traditions TV hosts, TV broadcasters, this is all about the media. So you have to be careful about the media's deception. Those listening for signals of things out in space, the transport industry, tourism, those working hotel and restaurant businesses as well on a higher level, healers, practitioners, and also those in hospitals and medical professions 
and charitable organizations. Now, there could be accidents involving trucks, driving, transport can cause some major injuries during this time. This can also include weather disasters while traveling, trucker strikes, conflicts with farmers in agriculture. These farmers and truckers could be in debt and are now striking due to new laws. They can be angry at leaders. This could involve conflicts with the entertainment industry and health and care workers. We are reviewing finances, money from other countries, or in other countries. Expenses, we're analyzing these things. There might be some conflicts in these matters. Debt in national treasuries will come up. Debt from countries in war and reviewing alliances with other countries. Sudden events in married life and partnerships and business or anyone in front of you may change or transform. This is also affairs that we deal with privately after marriage. Mars and Mercury conjunction will be in the sixth house showing us losses in the matters of war, the homeland, strikes, employment, and also accidents involving transport are possible, like I mentioned earlier. Jupiter is in the 10th house, and we have Mars in the 6th, so there is a mutual exchange between these houses right now. Now that Mars is no longer combust, this will give us a lot of courage to many people to start going after their career goals. Many will have the knowledge to do so as well. Use this time very wisely. The trick is not to be over demanding or aggressive, especially in your speech. It is better to use this to be encouraging to others. You might find that some people are very short with you or come at you verbally, aggressively. Don't feed into it. This can be in relationships as well as a possibility. This moon is about giving in and surrendering to the universal will. So Pusha is ruled by Saturn. So it can give us some karma if we don't listen to that. Instead of trying to make everything happen through force, you have to surrender. This can possibly give strength to the war as Mars is conjunct his enemy Mercury and is the lord of the 12th house of losses and endings, hospitalization and hidden enemies. Mars is exactly aspecting Rahu in the ninth house. Explosive events are on the horizon in war and possibly health matters. Rahu denotes war and violence to the most extreme levels, and it will amplify Mars's energy. Leaders could be on the attack. Weather disasters involving water, snow, fire are very possible. This can also involve problems with immigration, epidemics, skin diseases, eczema, boils, eruptions like volcano, and cancer. It's aspecting the ninth house, which is all about sea voyages and can involve more attacks on the Red Sea or escalate it. This can also involve the Navy, foreign nations, politics, immigrants in schools, and the United Nations and world organizations. So for the countries, the U.S. needs to be cautious as the sun and moon will be conjunct is Rahu and Ketu in the second and eighth house. Transiting Ketu is now conjunct its natal Saturn in the 10th house. Also, it's in Rahu Dasha. A lot of money is being lost to war right now. It is also due to the immigration of foreigners. I see a major weather disaster happening around this time until the beginning of February as these transits of Ketu and Saturn and Rahu as well on its IC happened last time when we had Hurricane Katrina. There's a lot of risk to war as well, and the stock market should be cautious. India, India is completing and communicating its completion and construction in the matters of religion and spirituality, which is the Ram Madir Hindu temple, which is under construction. Actually, I think it opens today, is the 22nd, in Uttar Pradesh. It's the birthplace of Rama, which is a DT in Hinduism. So it's very, very important day and a very, very important time in history. So it's really beautiful to see as Mars and Jupiter are very strong. So you would need a very strong Mars in order to have a temple of Rama. And it's also its lunar return and Pusha. It will conjunct its Mercury, Saturn, Venus, and Sun. It will transform the country and its reputation, to say the least. This will bring in revenue as well. Canada will be completing the matters of finance, open warfare, wars, public enemies, lawless elements, robbers, a lot to do with foreign affairs, relations with other countries, international affairs, foreign policies, litigations, lawsuits, foreign trade. There will be conflicts that will turn 
aggressive in communication in the matters of foreign affairs that could hurt its reputation and the country as a whole. There could be accidents involving driving and traveling. So that's just a little bit about what I see. I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you and I'll see you in the next one.